Life, Peter Schiff. This is Thursday, March 19, 2009. This is the second day after yesterday's announcement of the Fed to print an extra $1.1 trillion to buy up debt, government debt, mortgage debt, agency debt. And the dollar was following through on yesterday's route with another significant decline today. Gold prices continuing their advance. Gold stocks, the Philadelphia Gold Index, up another 7% today after its 9% jump yesterday, meaning the index is up 20% since the Fed's announcement yesterday afternoon. The dollar index, which dropped, I think, 3% yesterday, was down a percent and a half, so that's 4.5% in two days. Ultimately, I think this is going to turn into a route on the dollar. You know, I heard one of the announcers on CNBC say this morning that, well, if the Chinese aren't going to buy our bonds, we'll just print the money and buy them ourselves, as if that's a viable alternative. You see, the difference is when the Chinese buy our bonds, we don't have to print any money. We don't have to create any inflation. So we don't have to deal with the consequences of that inflation. The Chinese do. They expand their money supply to buy up our bonds, and we end up exporting our inflation to China. But what's going to happen now, if the Fed is buying the bonds and not the Chinese, the inflation stays here in the United States and destroys the savings and the wages of every American citizen. But it's more important than that. It's not simply that the Fed is going to start buying newly issued bonds that the Chinese don't want, but because the Fed has started down this road of monetizing debt, that's sending a message to holders of bonds all around the world that they better sell. They better sell now because they're going to lose purchasing power if they hold these bonds to maturity. So what's going to happen is people all around the world, individuals and foreign central banks, are going to rush to hit the Fed's bid. See, the Fed thinks they're going to buy $300 billion in treasuries. They're going to be overwhelmed. There's going to be trillions of treasuries offered for sale. And ultimately what's going to happen is as the dollar really starts to lose value and inflation starts to accelerate and the Fed has to monetize even more debt, there's an outright run on the currency and a run on our bonds. And then the only way the Fed can stop the collapse is to aggressively raise interest rates. Well, how are they going to do that? Rates are at zero. We're so over-leveraged as it is. And of course, the, the, you know, the, the more debt we accumulate, the harder it's going to be. And the further out of hand inflation gets, the higher rates are going to have to go. So the problem is, what if they don't do anything? What if they don't have the political courage uh, to rein in the inflation or save the dollar? Because they certainly don't have that courage right now. So this is a very, very dangerous time uh, to be invested in U.S. government debt, to be in money markets, to be in treasury bills. Uh, to be in any, any dollar denominated investments is a dangerous time to be an American citizen. It's a dangerous time to be working, you know, because your wages are going to be debased. You know, the problem, what the government is doing is not going to solve our problem. You're not going to solve a problem, you know, the, the, the severe structural problems underlying our economy with inflation. You're just going to mask them for a while, but you're allowing the problems to get worse. So the Fed's not going to stop the recession. They're simply going to turn it into an inflationary depression. And the problem is going to be now when millions of Americans lose their jobs, not only are they going to have to go without their income, but the cost of living is going to be a lot higher. Food's going to cost more. Energy is going to cost more. You know, look what happened to oil prices today. Oil was up over $3 a barrel. I've been saying on this video blog that it looked to me like oil prices were about to break out. And I think they, they have. And I think people are going to be shocked at how quickly oil retakes the $100 barrel level. You know, also, if you look at what's happened to the stock market, the Dow Jones right now is about 900 points off its low. But pressed in gold, the Dow is almost right on the record low. The Dow is worth 7.9 ounces of gold. The low was 7.8 ounces. So even though we've got a 900-point bounce, about 12% in the Dow, in terms of gold, the market is not even 1% off its low for, for, the, for the bear market. And this is what's happening. You know, when the Fed creates inflation, Maybe if they create enough inflation that they'll actually stop uh, nominal home prices from falling and nominal stock prices from falling. But because what they're doing so undermines our economy, they're actually going to make the real price of these assets fall even further. So Americans are going to lose even more wealth in, in real estate and in stocks because of the inflation. In nominal terms, sure, the nominal value of their assets are going to be rising, but that's not going to do them any good when their cost of living is rising even faster. 
You know, another note that I wanted to mention also, today the House passed the, this new tax to uh, tax the bonuses from the companies that got government money, top money, and they want to put a 90% income tax. Now, again, here you have a situation where two wrongs theoretically make a right, and they don't. The problem is that the government bailed these companies out. They should have let them fail. Had they let them fail, there would have been no bonuses for anybody. People would have got pay slips. Now, the government is upset that the bailout money is being used to pay the executives at the companies that they bailed out. Now, my bigger problem with this issue, apart from the fact that our, our leaders were so incompetent, they bailed out companies without even looking at their, probably at their balance sheets, at, at the contracts that they have with their employees. Now they're acting like they're outraged, they're shocked about this. But the precedent I don't like is that Congress can use the tax code for this purpose. The whole thing is unconstitutional. How can they single out a certain group of people and say, your tax rate is 90%? Because if you can do that, when you give Congress that precedent, I don't care that they're saying that we can do it now because we're just taking back the money we gave them. That's not the precedent. Once you get the camel's nose under the tent, the next time they want to do it, it might not be because the company got top money. It might just be because maybe the company is earning a lot of money. Maybe it's an oil company. Oil prices go back up to $150, $200, $300 a barrel. Maybe the oil executives are earning a lot of money. Well, let's tax them. Let's raise taxes on anyone who works for an oil company. Let's have higher dividends taxes on people who got dividends. What about capital gains taxes? What if they don't like where you earned your money? What if oil stocks go up 10 times or 100 times? You know, they probably will. People are going to make a lot of money, I think, owning gold stocks. What if the government says, that's not fair? Why should we let people profit who speculated? Why do we have a 90% tax on the profits of anybody who has gold stocks? I mean, we can't let the government try to fine-tune uh, the tax code. It needs to be uniform. We've all got to pay the same rate of tax. You can't make it different for each group of people, for employees of various companies. That's putting too much power into the hands of our politicians. But again, these are more of our rights and more of our liberties that are being surrendered as the government is usurping more power to solve this crisis that the government created and the government is now exacerbating. You know, again, on those lines, we got $5 billion more in bailout money announced today to the auto supply companies. So first they're bailing out the auto companies, now they're going down the food chain and they're bailing out the suppliers. Also, I read today that Citigroup is going to be able to sell $3 billion of credit card debt that's probably worthless, but they're selling it because the government is guaranteeing it. So again, we're bailing out more and more companies, more and more money. We are going down this path, and there is no hope. There is no escape from this. And I think there's a good chance that what we're seeing now in the dollar is going to turn all around. I mean, the dollar's dropped 4 4 4.5% in a couple of days. But if the dollar drops another 4 or 5% this week, and, and then really starts to go, look at the dollar index right now at about 83. If it crashes through 80 and closes the door there, which it could do this week, then I think the next stop is around 70. Once it breaks through new lows, it could be a very quick move uh, down, down to 60 or 50. And I think once that really starts to happen, then we're really going to be confronted with this crisis. If it doesn't happen right now, if it doesn't happen in the weeks ahead, maybe the dollar will get a reprieve, maybe we'll get a little bounce of the dollar, and then it might roll over. But it is going to happen. This is going to end up as a currency crisis. That's the only way it can end up. And if anybody thinks it's going to end differently, they're wrong. You know, it's funny, I was on CNBC today, and Steve Leisman actually had the nerve, <laughs> you know, towards the end of my interview, to say on camera how well I've been for the past several years because I've been predicting a decline in the dollar. I mean, talk about, you know, the pot calling the kettle black. I've been on his network for years. They started calling me Dr. Doom because I talked about an economic collapse that they said was impossible. Well, I knew that the end result of that collapse would be a collapse of the dollar. That hasn't happened yet, but it's in the process of happening. And of course, for the first few years I was on CNBC, the dollar was falling. We only got this knee-jerk bounce when the economic collapse that I forecast finally began to take hold. But I think the currency crisis that I know always knew was coming is now upon us. And it's amazing how clueless the mainstream media actually is to what's going on. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for listening.